Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter, Matt Ricketts, and our guest today, Dom Williams. This is Smart Business Moves. Hello, everybody. Hey, y'all. Good to see everybody. All right, let's. You do the y'all thing, but you're not from. I mean, you you live in like Washington State. Is that a, is y'all a thing in Washington State? I it's a thing in my house. I don't know if it is. Right. I've always said y'all. I don't know why. Right. Oh, you know, I do know why. Because it's the it's very easy. Nobody ever complains about y'all. Okay. Where they don't like some other terms. You guys, you folks, you know, y'all works. Don, welcome. This is your uh, first uh, first run here on Smart Business Moves, isn't it? Yeah, usually I'm in the comments making you guys read my comments. <laughs> well, we appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> so, yeah. Keep us busy. We do. That's helpful. I wanted to invite Dom because he does, he's in our biz, and he's in our business world as far as a uh, cleaning business owner. But uh, he's also a software entrepreneur as well and has a product called Hire Who. I don't know if you want to just take a brief moment and kind of describe Hire Who to the audience and what, what you do with that and how you use that in your business and how you help other people use that. Yeah. So basically, um, Hire Who is an applicant uh, tracking system built for small businesses. Um, so what it is, 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 is purely a tool for business owners like, like us to use to organize and streamline our hiring process, and more importantly, automate as much of that hiring process as possible. Um, we also have different features in there, such as texting. So, you know, one of the things which I'm sure we'll get into when we start talking about recruiting, um, one of the things we do for my cleaning company, every single person that that applies, they immediately receive a text message, and we start to engage that conversation within 60 seconds of them applying for our company. Yeah, I think I think that's really cool, and I think. I had this conversation with a friend of mine, Debbie. Uh, she owns a cleaning company in Texas, and she was looking for something like this because she wants a workflow to automate some of this, like where it's like, hey, send them this video or do this process. So like, can you describe, is there like a, can you like set up like like an automation where like they get a sequence of texts and things like that for the process? Yeah, yeah. so um, right now you can actually set up automations to where, you know, it, it pushes the applicants through a certain, you know, sequence of stages per se. So let's say you got the applied stage and then the next stage is, you know, you want it to send them a interview link, right? Okay. okay. And based on maybe their assessment test or based on their screening questions, um, it can automatically push them to that next stage. And then you could have the um, software um, do certain things, whether it's send them a text message, send them an email, um, okay. send you a reminder, like, like you're mentioning for your office staff to, to do it, to do whatever kind of works for your business flow. I, I think that's great. I think that, you know, I know Tom usually leads this, but I'm, I'm super big on this too. Cause I, I use, um, applicant tracking software and I recommend ever, everyone on our industry to do so. Um, you know, I'm kind of on something legacy. Otherwise I'd probably jump right over to what you're doing. Cause, um, it sounds more flexible than what I've got, but, um, I definitely see the value in anyone that's not texting their applicants is leaving money on the table, I think. So Tom and Liz kind of brought the idea of, to me, that hiring is a pipeline just like like sales. So everyone's always so concerned with sales as a pipeline in our, in our, our industry, but you can't run a business without, you know, uh, the assets to run the business, which is, you know, your value, most valuable asset, I think, is, is your staff. So you're kind of solving that pipeline that a lot of us are looking for. Yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely creating a flow. So like, you know, one of the things I, I like to let all of our users know, because, you know, every time I hop on a demo, you know, everyone's usually willing to just throw the money because they think that it's going to solve their, their recruiting problem. It won't do that. Right. <laughs> because, because every, you know, although I have this software, do I still have some of the same recruiting struggles? A hundred percent. Right. Do I still have some of the you know same retention struggles and do we still work through that every single day? Absolutely. You still got to. Oh, I hate it. Uh -oh. Because, you know, we're all what happened. You froze just for a second, but you're good. OK, um, you know, but, but the good thing about it is it, it does help, you know, 
put a, a workflow and a policy in place. That way, if you are truly, you know, scaling your business, all of your staff can follow a, you know, a, a system, you know. That's great. So, awesome. so Dom, uh, you're also in the cleaning business. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about you, how you got into the cleaning business, how long you've been doing it. And I'm curious how that translated to the software or were you in software before you were in cleaning? Yeah. So no, I was in cleaning first. So I've always been interested in just, you know, entrepreneurship. You know, when I was a kid in, in high school, for instance, in middle school and high school, I was always the one, you know, I had, I had a fundraiser going on a hundred percent of the time. So I always was selling candy to the teachers and the kids and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of where it started. And then when I graduated high school, I actually decided to start all these different businesses. I, I did a clothing line, didn't work out. I didn't want to sell clothes. And then I'm like, you know what, let, what, what can I do that is going to be, um, you know, what, what, what can I do that's going to be reoccurring and that I can really, you know, look, forecast and, and see revenue six months or eight months from now and what's going to be cheap to start. Um, so cleaning business is what I kind of came up with. And the CNC, um, cause the name of my business is CNC cleaning services is actually named after my great grandmothers who actually worked in the housekeeping, um, industry all their lives. So that's kind of how I came up with it. And it started in 2011, right after I graduated high school. So this is our 10th year anniversary. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Tell them how many people from your family work in your business. Cause I find that amazing. It's pretty amazing. Um, three. Three. So my mom. So my mom's uh, practically my my field manager, um, and uh, my grandma works in the office. She does uh, like the towels and, and things like that. Keeps everything tidy. And then um, my aunt, um, she works in my um, she she because we do commercial cleaning also. So she works at like one of the remote sites about forty five minutes, and she just goes in there and does um, works with the team every single night, just doing some part time stuff. For some reason, I thought it was four. I thought you had a cousin working for you too, but I guess I got that wrong. I thought, well, hey, by the time we spoke, Matt, they might have. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check. Yeah. So, uh, what, what geographic market do you service? Um, so I'm in Indiana. Okay. So I'm uh, 40, 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes away from Indianapolis. Let's go so, ahead. Got, yeah, it's called Kokomo, Indiana. So, where I'm at right now is Kokomo, Indiana, but we actually have another office in um, Noblesville, Indiana, which is about 15, 20 minutes from Indianapolis. So, and that market is really its own beast. So that's why we have another office there and we're trying to grow that market. Okay. We uh, have some friends in uh, Indianapolis. What, um, what town has um, Purdue University? Purdue is going to be in Lafayette. Lafayette, yeah. Yep. So I'm about 45 minutes from there. I'm like 45 minutes from everywhere. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 45 minutes from everywhere. But Purdue, yeah, Lafayette's pretty cool. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in Indianapolis. Uh, my prior uh, job when I worked in corporate as an airline pilot was headquartered there for Republic Airways. And uh, – uh, I was there, felt like all the time. Actually, it's a really, a really cool city. It's developed a lot over the last, uh, you know, last decade. The suburbs are growing like crazy there too, for whatever yeah. reason. It's, it's a really growing city. Um, big hub for uh, FedEx or UPS, not camera, which one. So a lot going, lot going on there. So a lot of, probably a lot of growth you're seeing. Yeah, we've got an Amazon near too. So cool. I'm just reaching out to a bunch of people that I know are struggling so that's what I'm doing over here. I'm texting people. Hey, come hear about Hire Who right now. Yeah. And right when you were talking about your location, I was texting somebody who is in Lafayette. So I was like, what? So, I can't over here. <laughs> so you, you've been in the cleaning business for 10 years. How, how did you get into How How did that translate into the software? Well, um, I mean, we had recruiting issues. <laughs> um, right. no. so, so, so honestly, um, I, what what really happened was about four years ago, I started to use an applicant tracking system, very similar to Matt, um, and it it was wonderful. I mean, you know, it, it was able to post on all these different job boards with one click. 
you can organize it. And, and I was doing my own recruiting at that time, 100%. And um, it was wonderful. And I was like, you know, what if we were to able to add other stuff? Like, you know, what if we were able to add texting to this? And believe it or not, and I don't know if, if, if you know, Tom, you, you started this way when you guys started Made Central, but it was a different idea at first. <laughs> at first, it, it was it was an idea where I was going to track to, I was gonna I was gonna create a way to know when people didn't show up when people would not likely show up for an interview okay okay so that's how it started and then I was like well how can I get all of these business owners to communicate just overnight and there's really no way to do that right um, so then we I pivoted I'm like you know I can't start that way so that's when I built the applicant tracking system and um, we actually have you know tags built into hire who so when someone, you know, applies for our company and we schedule an interview and they don't show up, we can actually put a tag on their, their profile. So whenever they apply for our company again, we could actually set up an automation that will automatically either reject that person or push them to a talent pool that says, hey, this person's kind of a flight risk, right? You see what I did there, Matt? You said that you were ex- Yeah, flight <laughs> risk. So, so yeah, so it does that too. I like that. I have this person that probably applies for my company like every month. And then one of those two, I'm like, you have actually no showed your interview like, like three times. Like, yep. so that's, that's an interesting solution to that problem. Cause we're like, like, you know, ma'am, like, you know, like we, we've tried this before. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so that's, that's kind of where it started is I wanted a solution to like, trying to prevent the no shows. Um, and it, it, it does help that a lot because we, we take, we now take a lot of more notes on applicants. Um, it, it really is very similar to, I don't, it, it's very similar to having, you know, a, a customer portal just for applicants, honestly, yeah. you know, because it, 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 it keeps track of the people with the same email address and the same phone number. And it links that together to show you, you know, when they when they most recently applied and, and, and the notes kind of stay with that person over the years. Yeah, I think that's really important. I think people, you know, people have, you know, there are all these different things on, you know, on the whole hiring process and various different things. I mean, the idea of applicant tracking software of like basically, you know, having a unified workflow from the time they first make contact with you to the time you onboard them and start their training and ideally, maybe someday you'll build this too, it would be like, you know, the training management, like all of that kind of, you know, kind of ties together really well, but you don't have to solve that problem because there's other, there's other tools that solve the training problem, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just tie into them someday. So that's, that's the cool thing about software is you don't have to, you're solving one specific thing and then you can keep improving and improving and dialing down on that. So what is the core thing that you think you help businesses? Like if you were to say like in one sentence, What's the most value that they get out of using an applicant tracking system? Um, the out of out of a applicant tracking system or higher? your yours. What's okay. Um, I think the number one thing that you would get. Well, I can't really name one. Two. I'll give you two. Okay, two. One. <laughs> one would be autom truly automating the process. But the other thing is, t a you can do you know everything that we're mentioning. You can do that with about six or seven different softwares, sure. right? You could do that. You could sign up for six or seven different softwares. We can we can do all of that with just signing up for us. So wow. we actually have, and I, I'm not on Facebook, so I can't put this up there, but we actually have like a, uh, a, um, like a quick glance sheet and like some of the platforms that a lot of people are using just to be able to do what we do is platforms such as like ClickUp, um, um, Trello, I'm sure you guys heard of some of those. Sure. Um, Calendly, you know, the smart calendar, Google Outlook, all of those, because we've got email built in, you're either using your cell phone or Twilio, right? Um, and then you're also, a lot of people are using like, you know, Zap for those automations to kind of link all those things together. So one of the number one things that we're going to do for the person that wants to leverage software to make things a little bit easier, but doesn't want or doesn't have the time or, you know, the capabilities to put all those things together just sign up for hire who and it, it will be able to do all that for you. The moment you sign up, it gives you a cell phone number instantly. Yeah, so you're bringing it all, you're bringing it all these various different parts into one thing. And then it sounds like you're tracking the life cycle of each applicant and, you know, um, maybe you're not necessarily scoring them, but you're, you're, you're creating tags and like, you know, basically, you know, measuring their way through that, through that hiring funnel. 
because we do that with we do that with sales. Why wouldn't we do that with yeah. why wouldn't we do that with hiring people? Of, you 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 always want to be recruiting. Doesn't mean that you're always hiring, but you always want to be recruiting. And if you aren't using you know the right tools, the right automation, the right technology to do that. You're not going to be as efficient or as effective uh, as you need to be, especially, you know, here in 2021, there's just all your competitors are doing it and everybody else that's hiring is doing it. If you aren't doing it, you're really going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah. Don, I, I would really love, uh, you're, go ahead, speak to that, please. No, you're, you're fine. Go ahead. I just have I, something completely different. I, I had a question. Oh, yeah. So this is completely different, too. I would love to hear a little bit about what you have seen, what kind of changes you've seen and how you've had to modify hire who and what, what types of things people should be looking at. Like what are some of the specific challenges that you know of from the inside that we might not know about? Yeah. So one of the things that I've noticed um, that I've always noticed within like, I'm trying to, because everyone hires so different. So what, oh, yeah. I'll, what I'll say first is, I don't, I don't think there's a wrong way or right way. To, I think everyone has their own different ways for their markets and things like that. Um, I've seen people's application processes be extremely long and make it extremely difficult to apply for their company. Um, what I'm noticing now, because everyone's struggling, that we've all made it a lot easier to hire for, our, you know, or to apply for our company. Um, so that's one of the changes that I've, that I've noticed is that some people have kind of leveraged that and, and just made it like, Hey, just, just apply, you know, whatever, just, just, just come and apply, you know, cause we're begging for applications. Um, so that's one of the things I've noticed. Um, I th believe it or not, I, I get a lot of pushback when people like, you know, I don't, I don't really like texting applicants. You know, I don't know if that's professional. And five years ago, I would have said the same thing if you would have asked me. Um, but now it's like, I can't imagine calling a hundred people, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I, just, I can't imagine that. So, um, so a, a lot of the people that we've communicated with are more open-minded because the, the, the talent pool has shifted a lot. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I hear that, that you're doing, which I think is really important when you're looking at technology to help with the hiring process you know, a lot of the portals that are, you know, used to, to, to do the recruiting, you know, Indeed, uh, Snag a Job, you know, there are others. A lot of them have their own technology solutions that they kind of put forth as their version of an applicant tracking system. Mm -hmm. They have some really good functionality, but they stop short. They don't really want to make it easy for you to go back and mine people who applied for a job six months ago, a year ago. They want you to keep spending money to find new applicants. Whereas what Dom's doing here gives you the ability to not only you know work new leads, if you will, new new, new candidates. But if you choose to, I assume that you can go back and text and email people that, that you talked to in years past. So great point, Tom. So first of all, that's probably like my, my number one feature that I love about HireWho. Uh -huh. So it, it's it's basically what you, what, what you said, Matt, earlier. It's marketing, right? So we do a lot of. Um, commercial accounts where, you know, you might need one employee and they go in, you know, every night, two or three hours. Well, let's say we have that position open and we hire for it. Let's say six months down the road goes on and that employee flakes and we need someone else. Well, a lot of times there are 60 other applicants that apply that we never either communicated with, followed up with or hired, or we just didn't do anything with. So we, what we're able to do is go back in there, click, I think two buttons and send 60 people a text message all at once and say, hey, a position you applied for here is available again. Are you interested in chatting about the opportunity? We've actually been doing that a lot more now because of the applicant count is so low. So we've been just remarketing back to those same people that have applied six months or a year ago to see if they're interested in talking about an opportunity again. That's a good, good point. So how long have you been... Um, when did you start working on HireWho and when did you start offering it as a 
product that other companies could license. Yeah. So I started um, offering it to people about a year and a half ago, started working on it about three years ago. I've been using it for probably two and a half years. Okay. Right. So I've been, I used it for quite some time before we actually offered it to people to, to purchase and whatnot. So, yeah. I really love Dom that you said that you can send a text out to, you know, everybody all at one time with just two clicks. Yep. Ah, a lot of systems can, can do a lot of different things, but they make it so difficult. Yep. <laughs> It's yep. so hard. So two clicks, sending it out to everybody. Ah, that's a huge win for me. That sounds yeah. awesome. And, and you can build, you know, the templates and, you know, that way you're not constantly redoing the work. You know, you can kind of set it up and, you know, play with, you know, the thing is I, I built it so, you know, I could set it up for my staff and then they could be using the same terminology, you know, the certain, the same type of text or the same type of email. Tom, you said something about um, Indeed that I kind of wanted to touch on. You said something that, you know, Indeed's never going to make it easy for you. Um, so everyone kind of has like a love and hate relationship with Indeed because like, you know, it costs, it does cost money, uh, which is fine. You know, we pay money for, you know, marketing and advertising. Like Matt, I see your ads all day for Better Life Maids. And, and, and it's good because I get ideas and inspiration from it. Um, but Indeed is truly built for the applicant. It's built for the applicant. Like they make it extremely easy to apply for companies. It, you know, they call it the, you know, the quick click, the uh, uh, quick apply or whatever it's called. They make it easily to do that. They allow you to apply as many times as you want. Um, so it, I don't know if it'll ever get easier for the business owner when you're dealing directly with the, the job board, you know? So having an applicant tracking system, whether it's hire who or any of the, you know, other job boards uh, or other ATSs does help filter and organize all those job boards that you're going to connect with. Which is kind of interesting. I, I, I get that, but the applicants don't really pay the bills. It's the employers, right? I don't know though. I think that, I think that if, you know, if you don't bring enough people to the platform, then employers aren't going to come to Just it. Just for inventory. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... I'm not paying anything if there aren't a lot of applicants. You know, mm -hmm. ten, 10 years ago, none of us were using Indeed. I think Indeed came on the market about, like, that I was really aware with it about seven years ago, that I was really... I was using Craigslist, Craigslist ads really effectively, and now we still post them to Craigslist. <laughs> But I don't really, I mean, I know, I look at my data and I, I'd have to pull some reports on it through our applicant tracking system, but it's it's pretty much Indeed or, or, or referrals, maybe yeah. face, Facebook. To Facebook is starting to really take off for us now. We're spending a little bit more on Facebook advertising um, for, for applicants. But um, do you have an idea, like, so you, you actually have the data. Do you have an idea what percentage of, of applicants are coming from you know, in aggregate across all your users, is it like, you know, mostly indeed still is that, we, we, you know, without digging oh. in the numbers. Uh, so what I'll say is it, it, it varies depending on the type of industry, right? So when, when, when a person signs up for hire who, um, they connect their account with indeed, uh -huh. but then it automatically will post your job on Google zip recruiter, um, Monster and I believe Career Builder. Okay, so it'll, it'll automatically post to those job boards, and then any of those job boards that have that are affiliated with other smaller job boards, it'll post there too. But the thing is, no one really goes to Monster.com for a cleaning position usually, no. not in my area at no. least. So it so the numbers are kind of skewed. But so but for a cleaning industry, the the only place I get applicants really from is Indeed and facebook okay that's really that's really it and then referrals are people that go directly to my website so you're saying i could save that 150 dollars a week in in craigslist postings that i'm doing you, probably, you probably you probably can i think um, i probably should I, yeah I mean, i'm trying to catch a long tail there of like the of the occasional 50 year old that's still looking you know for a job that might be like on craigslist that you know yeah. like just hasn't adopted to the new things but yeah. I, I think it's I think it's basically like like Tom's Tom alluded to. It's so easy, or you alluded to, and then you know Tom kind of brought back up was it's so easy to apply on on Indeed. It's like one click once you've already filled in your information. You can just basically click 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 apply for jobs, 
<laughs> like half the time people are like, oh, what job was it that I applied yep. for? <laughs> and they'll, they'll tell you over the phone. I mean, I mean, I applied for 30 jobs. Tell me what this is about again. Tell me, tell mm-hmm. me what this is about. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> And they, they make it so they make it so very easy. So one other thing I want to talk about is um, you talked about like, you know, shortening the application down and things like that. I, I, I'm of the mindset. I still through COVID, I made my application process harder. Mm-hmm. I did. And, I, and I'll and I'll tell you, um, you know, yeah, we're tight on labor. Like I had almost 40 texts before COVID started and I've got 26 texts, 27 texts right now. We're, we're still way down. Yeah. The quality of people that I've, that I've, that I've maintained and the new hires that I'm bringing on is really good. Tom, I've got a, I've got a, a, a slide up a bit or not a slide, just some data up. I don't know if we can, I can zoom in a little bit, make it bigger here. I'm going to have to zoom this way and so people can read it. Um, it. Okay. So, you know, what I'm really interested though is, is if I hire them, right? So I, I hired three people in January of this year. Um, two of them are still here, right? So, so 33% quit within the first, you know, within the first 30 days, I had a hundred percent quit rate in February. That wasn't great. Um, you know, 75% this month, but for the year so far, you know, 41% quit within the first 30 days. That sounds bad, but that used to be higher, right? That used to be like much worse. And so I, I want to make them jump through a few more hoops before they show up their first day. Um, you know, commit, you know, check their commitment level. I, I think if you make it so easy that you just gave them the job, um, you know, I think that that's counterproductive a, a little bit. Um, so, so do you have any like, kind of like gates that they have to kind of get through and hire who like they have to finish this next step? Like, so you talked about like, there's, you, you put them through a pipeline. Is yeah. There, is there some gates that you put them through? So um, for us, what we do for our, um, house cleaners per se, is they fill out the basic portion of the application. They answer screening questions, which honestly can tell them yes or no if they're pre-qualified. And then they answer um, some more in-depth application questions like, you know, why they're best fit or, you know, all those mushy questions that we we like to ask. And then it will push them through an assessment test. Um, And then the assessment test you, you can score their answers in that assessment test and you cool. can customize that for your, for your business. Cool. Um, and then based on their score there, you could then push them to the next stage where uh, you could then do a zoom interview, you know, or you could do like an in-person interview invite if you'd like also. I so missed, that's what our process looks like. Yeah. We used to do with my old ATS, we used to do more assessments and I really liked that step. We, we do an assessment after the interview now, which is probably not ideal. It'd be better to almost have that prior to the interview. It's kind of a mm-hmm. post, it's a post interview step in my current applicant tracking system, which I think what I, it's good though, cause we're doing our interviews over zoom. And so before I send them a job offer, we put them through one more, one more gate basically to mm-hmm. say, Hey, will you finish this next step before you say you're going to accept the job? So then they, then they, take 30 minutes and do an assessment. And, you know, then, then once they complete that and that looks good, we move them to the next step. So yeah. I like the the gates. The the other thing too, that we do um, is once they apply after they think that they're done, even if they schedule the interview, if if they get to that point, um, it will send them that automated text message that will ask them, um, why do they think they're a good fit to work for our company? One of the questions, it's something. Uh, I think it's why, why do they think they're a good fit to work for our cleaning company? And, and, we, and, then, and we also say, tell us about yourself. And that question alone, <laughs> the tell, tell us about you gives us so much information. Usually in that response, we find out how many kids they have, if they're single or married, um, if they're close to the office, I mean, we find out so much stuff. We either find out a lot of detail within that response, or they just say, uh, I want to be, I want to clean for a living. And then those people normally don't make it to the next stage just because of their response. But the people that leave a lengthy, you know, response and they're giving details, usually we, we try to engage with them a little bit more. Cool. And, and do they respond through an email? Is, is that how they would respond to that question? Or- well, we so we, we usually set up the automations to go out with email and text message. 
no one rarely ever responds via email. So rarely. It's, it's okay. always, it's always texting. And I mean, I'm telling you guys, I, I've gotten crazy with it. I mean, I've, there's been times where, you know, you, you, I get so busy during the day and this is when I was doing recruiting hundred percent for my business, but you know, where you get so busy during the day and you have those days and then like you're at home now and it's eight o'clock. You're like, man, I didn't do any recruiting today. What am I doing? Right. So then you'll go through and you'll start texting people and they're okay with it because it's texting. But you would never call people at 830 at mm -hmm. night and have a conversation. But if they're responding via text message, it's like, OK, well, let's let's have a little short conversation. And while we're at it, let's schedule an interview for tomorrow. I'm bad with boundaries on text messaging, too. I let people text me way too late at night and and I'm bad about texting people about that. So I can I can yeah, I was getting ready to say that kind of goes both ways. Matt. No, I know. I was going to say <laughs> I, I have bad boundaries on it, too. It's. It's uh, so I totally can see that, like how like a like someone looking for a job would would actually be like, oh, eight o'clock. No big deal. I'm watching the game and this job reached out to me. This is cool. Like whatever. I, I can see that being um, within the bounds of text messaging versus, you know, uh, people shut down email for the day. They see that as more of a distraction. I see texting as just as a, you know, just as distracting for whatever reason. But um, people shut their email down for whatever reason. And for the email too, Tom, because you, you said, how do we do that? For for cleaning specifically, I'm not sure a lot of our team checks their email. You know, like we all check our email. We're in business. But for, for, our, for our text, a lot of them don't, a lot of mine don't check their email. I know for sure. I, I sent, we, we did a thing where we were just sending random Amazon gift cards. And you know, Amazon tells you when, when they open the gift card. Right. I think it took one of my cleaners like three weeks to notice that she had a $25 Amazon gift card in her email. Oh, wow. And that was after I told everybody that we sent, sent it to them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just, they just some people just don't, you know, with text messages, some just do not communicate with email anymore, you know? I, I get so it. I'm so glad that you are saying this, Dom, because I think it is just really hard, especially for older business owners to sort of wrap their head around this idea that texting is completely appropriate and that it is the preferred method by our workforce. I mean, it's it's great to do what we want to do, but if it's not landing for our <laughs> workforce, for our potential workforce, what good is it? Yeah. There's a question from Robin, it looks here. Yeah, he wants to know uh, how I guess power who integrates with Indeed and Facebook, does the data flow through or are they having yeah. to apply in both places? Yeah, so that's a great question. So remember how we were all speaking about how Indeed has this feature where applicants can do like a quick apply, right? Yes. Okay. You either love that feature or you hate that a hundred people can apply with a click of a button. So when you integrate it with Indeed, first of all, for Indeed, they only have to apply once. It, it, when you go to Indeed, you can like if any, if any one of us were to just go to Indeed now and pull up a job, it'll say maybe quick apply or it might say apply on a company website. OK, so Robin, what happens is the apply on company website portion, they'll click on that button and it will immediately take them to the landing page of that hire who job posting. OK, so they only have to do it once. And the other good thing is, though you're not going to get a lot of those junk applicants because some of those people will stop right there. When they realize they can't apply with just the click of a button, they'll stop. They don't want to take any effort. They don't want to do anything else from there. Um, for Facebook, um, we're not directly integrated with Facebook. Facebook has shut down a lot of their integrations because of COVID um, and because I think because of the Apple thing that you're doing, they got going on. But either way, because of COVID, um, so what happens is when someone applies on our Facebook page, um, we set up an automation on the Facebook backend that sends them a link to complete the application. So that's how we take care of that. So, you know, as Matt was alluding to, you probably see a lot of trends within industry from a recruiting standpoint do you see employers, you know, doing things differently, working harder, are they, you know, getting fewer applicants, more applicants? Uh, 
I guess you can maybe tell through your platform how many applicants are showing up for interviews. Um, is there any insight that, you know, I know a lot of us are frustrated with our own businesses and just kind of wondering, you know, am I the only company that, that are, you know, people who sign up for an interview and never show up? Um, are, are you seeing that uh, on, on, on a broader scale through your, through your software? Yeah. So um, what we're, one thing that we're noticing is that there's more, there's less applicants that are applying for jobs than, than ever. Um, I know that some of the states are pulling out the, the federal additional federal aid. So that's helping. We've actually have noticed a slight increase of applicants um, when Indiana announced that, I think last week. Um, so that's one thing. L lots of, you know, much lower applicants are applying. But what I've noticed is, especially with my cleaning company, is the applicants that do apply happen to be a different level of quality. Like they're they're actually more qualified. We're getting people that are coming from the cleaning industry more than ever. We're getting people that have worked at jobs for five or seven years more than ever. You know, we, we talk about how it's a great time for anyone to find, you know, a job if they're unemployed. It's a great time for any employable person to go find a job because they'll get paid more. I mean, all types of things. So, um, yeah, we're, we're seeing more quality applicants apply, apply now. And that's amazing. Why do you think that is? Why? That, that, yeah. because, well, just to keep the answer short, the fact that there are so many jobs available right now and there's, a, there's an incentive for people that don't want to work to not work anymore, the people that are taking that initiative to say, you know, regardless of the fact that I could stay on unemployment, I do want to work. Those are the people that we're looking for. The people that do want to show up to work, the people that, that, that don't feel comfortable being unemployed in this time. Right. Yeah. So one thing, you know, one thing I'm happy to share with, with people is, is that, even as many hoops as I jump through, as much as I pay, you know, turnover was definitely a challenge even for us last year. I've got a turnover, uh, a turnover slide kind of brought up and um, we can share that if you want. But the, sure. the main idea of what I'm sharing is, is that, you know, I actually saw it trending down. So this is for the last 52 weeks, basically. So annualized turnover was at about 213%. Um, you know, about a year, a year ago. And, and obviously that was in the mid, the middle of COVID we had reopened. Um, but you know, our, our turnover really jumped up at that point. We were, we were below hundred percent annualized turnover prior to this. So our turnover really shot up and then we've been driving it down, but it's hard. It's hard when it's at 200% to really, you know, week after week, you're driving it down. People are going to leave and come. So we, we were driving it down and then there was like a spike, you know, probably 12, 13 weeks ago where we started to see a lot of people leave again with, um, you know, some, some disincentives like you, like you mentioned and things like that. Um, but um, are, are you seeing, are you seeing trends where, you know, do you, do you feel like, you know, that retention is more important or is it, you know, is it just, you know, higher, higher, higher? I mean, or is it both? Like what are your, you know, what, what do people need to be cracking on right now? Um, okay, so that's a good question. Um, and I want to hear all of you guys' feedback on that. <laughs> but um, I think we have to focus on retention, you know, because we can we can hire anybody, you know. I mean, you can do hundreds of interviews and, you know, you think that you've hired the right person. But if I look at it like a like a like a bucket, right? If you've got all of if you're keep putting more water in the bucket, but you have a hole at the bottom, nothing matters. <laughs> So you're still going to end up with less water. So you have to work on retention, you know, equally that you do on, on recruiting and putting more water in there. So um, I would say retention is more important than recruiting. Yeah. That's my input. But I want to know your guys' input on that too, though. I'll share. Really? I think, go ahead, Liz, once you... Okay, so I, I'm on the same wavelength as you, Dom. I mean, definitely retention, but right now you got to be hiring. You, you just oh, have yeah. to hire. We've always got to still hire. <laughs> yeah, still keep hiring. But 
really got to maintain the focus on the retention. And really, I think retention is tr a lot trickier nowadays than it was in the future because we have so many people that are remote, so many people that are working solo. You know, there's 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 additional trickiness going on with the retention than it's to from for my business. It's harder now than it has ever been in the history of our company, and we've been doing this for about 27 years now. And this is the the trickiest time I've ever seen. So for sure, retention like stay on it and like keep tweaking and adjusting, but hiring, uh, hiring too right now. When, when you're short of, of, you know, technicians, you'll throw as much, you know, time, you know, time and treasure as, as, as you can muster at recruiting and hiring. And a lot of times you neglect you know, everything that happens from, you know, the instant you hire somebody through the process until, you know, they made it through training and are, you know, a successful technician. And if you take some of the resources that you're burning on the front end, recruiting and hiring and apply it on those other steps until they're, they're a technician, you can uh, get a better return off of your, 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 your time and treasure that way. We've uh, done it ourselves. We've seen other companies do it where, you know, you're, you're just the, the cost of that turnover and then you start getting on that wheel, you just kind of double down and you just keep hiring and hiring and hiring and you don't even take the time to think about what happens, you know. I, I, agree. I agree with that 100%. Um, I was having a conversation with um, my HR manager a week ago because she was having conversations about, you know, well, I've got these two starting this week, these three. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just like, you know, we keep talking about all this recruiting. What are we doing for the retainment of our current employees? Because we we get so focused on that. And then you literally forget about we got to take care of all these other people that have been here for a year or been here for two years or or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. you, you honestly just lose track of that. You have to focus on that at the same time. You do. And that's the key. Same time. You can't, it's not a one or the other thing. It's exactly the same time. You got to keep at it. I'll share, I'll share one more screen with you guys, if you don't mind. This is kind of a, a quick report from Google Analytics. Um, see if I can zoom this in a bit. Is this your career page? Uh, no, this is, this is actually, this is actually just how many leads we're getting right now. Okay. Um, and how it's like water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink, right? Like, so um, I, it's kind of hard to read. I'm having trouble zooming in, but so 706 leads in the last uh, 30 days. <laughs> um, we, we've, we've got our online booking really dialed down because you can only book based on real availability, but even still we've had 32 people finish bookings online. Um, but 674 of these leads or goal completions have been requests for quotes. So yeah, if I could hire everyone that I wanted right now, my company would be bigger than it was prior to COVID. I mean, we're again, water, water everywhere. It's like this gush of, of leads coming in and I'm tracking all of this and I have this amazing sales funnel and great marketing that I don't want to turn off because I've invested so much in, you know, in it. And I believe that we're going to get turned this around with the employees, but man, it is, it is discouraging to see this kind of performance on our marketing without the people, to do it. I'm sure we're all seeing it, but I, I mean, I really track this. So this is, you know, every web lead that comes in through Made Central off my website and every booking that's in real time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've never seen, I th I'd have to go back and compare this, but I'd say this is, I'd say compared to, well, compared to a year ago, that's not really, that's not really relevant, I suppose. But uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pull a report at some point and see compared two years ago, I'm going to guess this is, significantly higher than anything I've ever seen before. Matt, 700 leads is ridiculous, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, that is crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. If you use a point system like Derek's point system, this is why I fired a, this is why I fired a customer that, that we were spending, they were spending 150,000 a year with us last month, but the profit margins were too tight. I've already replaced the revenue from that job plus some in this last month. So we, 
we ended servicing them at the uh, at the beginning of this month, at the beginning of May. May fourth was the last day, and it would be the equivalent of like nine and a half weekly customers, basically. If you're using a point system, that's like almost forty points. Uh, you know, I, whatever, however you track your customers. Um, but yeah, we've we've more than replaced them with the amount of lead flow that's coming in. So I can't be alone, right? Like I think everyone is probably uh, is probably experiencing this. I just track all this, you know, really carefully, and and I'll have to go to my to my uh, applicant tracking system. But the the numbers don't match, right? It's not. Yeah. There's definitely a a demand issue that we are unable to meet with supply, and uh, you know that's it goes back to like a lot of these conversations we've had about you know, um, you know, customers wanting crazy things right now and, you know, you know, making sure you're, you're really, you know, um, having, you know, uh, conversations with customers that are underbid and stuff like that. Because if you are, if you are keeping these customers that are, that are driving you crazy, things like that, and you're not making enough money, then it goes into the idea that you can't pay to can't pay enough, right? Like, because you don't have jobs that you're charging enough for. I just want to ask you a quick question. Do you do you charge? Do you do like fee split, like commission, or do you do job ticket hour? How do you how do you pay um, your team members? I mean, some are probably hourly. You probably do a mix. I don't know. Yeah. So we pay we pay a base hourly pay, and then everything else is kind of based on performance, based on their quality, and based on attendance. Okay. So right. most people start at anywhere. Most people start with the base of thirteen an hour, and as long as they show up, they get an extra like two or three bucks an hour, and then as long as they have good quality. There's another two dollars up to there, so they everyone's gonna make at least thirteen. But if you're a B or A player, you're gonna make seventeen, eighteen dollars now. Okay. So we have a couple of questions here. So first question was up. Uh, Robin wanted to know. I can add it here, real quick. Oh, that's not the one. He wants to know. This was the first one he said. We nope. answered that one. We already answered that one. It's not. It's not coming up for me. Here we go. How does hire who help get better applicants? It does it. No one can help you do that. <laughs> so, so, yeah. um, that's the answer. No one can help you that's do that. Well, the only thing that hire who would do for you in the sense of um, for the for the applicant portion, it can help you filter and screen those applicants. That way you're not wasting the time on filtering through so many of those applications. And then it can, you know, push them through automations to help save your office staff or you time on on the on the back end for the admin so that that is a, a believe it or not that question is asked a lot um it's also actually you know can hire who help you get more applicants no you know we we have we have no platform and we have no intentions on building a platform that is going to drive applicants we're not trying to be the next indeed um, you know, indeed is indeed for a reason. Um, so they're already doing all the marketing to pull the applicants in. All we're going to do is act as a tool to help you filter and screen those better, help you automate it, help you engage with them and connect with them, and then truly get that person into an employee stage. That's what we're going to do. Nice. All right. So also Wayne and Gus, uh, Matt does work for Made Central. Matt, how long have you worked for Made Central now? <laughs> like two and a half months, two months now. I've been an advisor with on the on the team for a while, but I officially came time. forever. Yeah, I've been a, I've been an, an advisor on the project for a while. Uh, Wayne, I think we had a demo this morning. You rescheduled. Get back on my schedule. I want to. I want to. <laughs> got a successful business. I want to talk to you. A bit. So uh, you know, yeah. you twenty. That's a little passionate, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. So there, there is no plan for Matt to come on here and share stuff. But anybody that knows Matt knows he's got to share. And this is, he's a numbers guy. He's got to be sharing all this stuff. So yeah. that, hey, Matt, can, can you, can you pull up? Um, do you mind? Cause I want to talk about this before we do end it. Yeah. Uh, you said something at the beginning about, you know, and which is extremely important that recruiting has to be done the same way as marketing. Can you go to my cleaning website if I push send it to you really quick? Yeah. What is so? What's the address? I can just type it up. CCCleanIndiana.com. What CCCleanIndiana? CCCleanIndiana.com. Yeah, I put it in the private chat. Also, while you guys are looking that up, yes, Robin, screening and automation helps filter the better applicants. Then, right? It it automates it. 
it makes it so that you can manage the process better. Whatever you're using, you'll be able to manage it much better, much smoothly with less um, time, less, less energy, less anything if you're using um, higher hoop. I like your website, by the way. We should pu pull this up, Tom. This is a beautiful website. So scroll, if you can scroll down to careers, because I want to show. Yeah, I need to do better about this on my website. Careers here. Yep. Okay. So one of the things that sometimes we cleaning business owners forget about is ensuring that, you know, what we're doing is it, we're truly selling that to the people that are about to apply for our company. So, you know, if you don't have, you know, a career page explaining some of the benefits or some of your core values, you know, this, this is a good example. Um, and there's a lot of other good examples out there too. I've seen a lot of other cleaning business uh, pages, Matt, your, your career page is, is pretty nice too. But it's not, a, this is clean. This is clean. I don't, I think, um, I mean, your website, did you just redo this? This is beautiful. This is really well done. Did you, Matt, Matt just a little, we, we have the same designer for, for oh, okay. <laughs> so, 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 so yeah. yeah, but, um, but no, yeah, we redid it probably like six months ago. Okay. About six so months yeah, ago. Little COVID, little COVID project. Um, for, for yeah. sure. I don't yeah. mind sharing. I don't mind sharing our, the designer we have. He's good. I don't want to put it out here on blast. Cause I don't want him to get too busy that he can't help my, uh, help <laughs> yeah. my business. Yeah. So, but, but at the, at the bottom there, so you see those job openings. Yeah. Okay, so that is just some code that that a user could take right out of Hire Who and yep. throw onto their website. And the value of that is if if you are, you know, someone that may not be that super tech savvy, when you're posting jobs on Hire Who, those jobs will automatically be updated in real time on your website. So, you know, once you have someone build you a, a very beautiful career page, you can then just always keep your job openings updated right there on on your career page so i want to tell you i really like this as a um as a feature i think i'm going to put an instagram feed on my career page based on what you just did here because most of our instagram pictures are just our cleaning techs having fun and stuff like that nice so i i got an idea from your your site that i'm gonna that i'm gonna implement here in the next week or two is to basically put an instagram feed onto my jobs page i'm gonna put this down as a note because i don't have a pen with me but i'll remember um, this is a, this is a really, for people that are watching, this is really good because people are like, they're putting themselves in the shoes with these images. Like, oh, this is fun. Like they're having a Christmas party here. Like these employees look like me. Like I could, I could work here. Um, I don't know if I want a feather duster in my face, but I, you know, she's having fun. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, so yeah. And, and the other thing too, that we do, which you can even see as you were scrolling down on the job openings. We have quite a few of the same type of job openings, but the names, the namings are, the names are different. And, you know, the location might be a little bit different because we're trying to, we're utilizing, you know, kind of marketing to see oh, if we're going to get a different applicant in here. This is really smart because I should do this too, because like my office is in St. Louis County, but I should probably be advertising in St. Louis city and Jefferson County, which is another County that, is a good draw for employees, especially since my employees can just, you know, drive from their house to their first job. Um, yeah, that's, this is smart. And then this would actually be really smart in how you post this in Indeed, guys. So whoever's watching this, look what he's doing here. This is really smart. So he's actually segmenting out his, his job postings with the location. So if you are trying to draw from a few different areas, Tom, you should do this too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is actually really clever. Um, I, I, this is good marketing. So, um, you know, for me, I need to I need to draw from three separate counties for employees, and uh, I can I can already take home a couple ideas right from this. Um, so, this how many can you do? Do you know how many applicants you get that originated on your website versus through some of your other sources? I mean, relative to Indeed, for instance, I'm assuming more applications come in through Indeed than people who wind up on your jobs page on your website. Right. So one of the things is, Tom, we're we're actually in the process of redoing our. So when you have a hire who account, you have a dashboard 
and we're in the process of redoing the dashboard. So when you log in, it shows you just those data points. Okay, hey, this is where your top source is coming from. If you move someone to the higher stage, this is where the top source of people that you're actually hiring, here's where people are falling off in your stage. So we're actually in the process of revamping that. Um, I can tell, but it's only because I built it. But other <laughs> Yeah. So, but one thing about this, what, you know, are these the job titles? Like, do you actually create an, an Indeed, which I think would be really smart, would be it's actually linked. It's linked. So the moment I click play, the moment yeah. I click play on that job, it pushes it to Indeed in three to four hours. So everyone that's watching, so like put where, put some, put some variety of locations on your ads in the titles, guys. This is a great idea because then you can expand your, um, you can expand your reach for people that are searching for jobs in their area, maybe even a few different towns that are centered around like the bigger towns in a county or something like that. Uh, this how, is clever. That, how would that work with your sponsorship uh, spend? Do you, is that on a per ad basis? Or yeah, you'd have, to, you'd have to segment each, each ad that I do. I do. I, 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 I do. You can either do pay per click or there's a couple different ways to do, um, to do ads within Indeed, but you would actually sponsor each job. So each job would have its own spin and you might spend more on the bigger counties and less on the smaller counties or the smaller towns that you're trying to advertise to. But um, this is a takeaway I'm gonna implement like maybe tomorrow. I mean, this is, this is some, I'm glad we went to this page cause there's a lot, there's a lot here. Um, we're talking about marketing and marketing to employees and you gotta reach them where they're at. This is, this is a big takeaway for me. The, the same way that you do the sponsoring on the back end of Indeed, it's still the same. You don't have to change that flow, Tom. So okay. all, all of those jobs that you're seeing on that page, if you were to go to Indeed right now, they're going to show on Indeed. Okay. But the difference is it will not allow you to do a quick apply. It's going to say apply on company website. And when you click that button, it's going to take you to that landing page of one of those jobs that you clicked on. Yeah, that, that was a question that Robin was asking about cutting out the quick applies. Oh, yeah, it does. And then you have you have some Spanish language uh, applications. Do you help people with that or is that like kind of built into the to the back end of or do they have to do their own translations <laughs> to do that? That's good. That's good. It's on our list. It's okay. on our, it's been a long list. I'm sure you guys do, too. We got we got a long list. Um, but no, I did. That, I did that on my own. And, and honestly, what I tell what I tell people. It's very easy to do that. It, right. it took me, you know, five, and there might be some type of errors in it, you know, from the way that Spanish people speak. Um, but I just, I just use Google Translator and better than it. it's better than nothing. It's you have some Spanish up there, and like you're making it, you're making it easier for them to apply. Go ahead, Liz. I have to get my question out there real quick before he heads off. So, just as we're closing up here, Dom, what are so I know you have a long list of things that you're doing, but what would you, what are like the next three things that you're looking to bring to hire who, what, what can people look forward to? Okay. So the, the number one thing that we're working on right now is the analytics portion, which is going to be on the dashboard. That way people know exactly. Um, I wish I would have logged in, but that way people know exactly where, their applicants are coming from and where they're falling off in the stages. That way, Matt, when you're talking about your process is long, well, is that working 100%? And you'll know, hey, people are going through this process and there's no issues. Where are And if they are stopping in the application process, where exactly are they stopping at in that process? So that's one of the things that we're working on. That's going to be huge. The other thing is right now, we do have the smart calendar feature where it will take um, you know, your availability, very similar to Calendly, but we're actually going to make it even better to where it's even, it's either exactly like that or much better than even the way that Calendly is built. So we're enhancing that. Um, and then lastly, um, we're constantly working on additional automations in our platform. That way you could just continue to keep automating more and more things, you know, that way the process, you know, is less hands-on. Um, and one last thing, the fourth thing, fourth thing that we're doing is we're constantly looking for job boards to integrate with. Um, so we were on like the Facebook job board request for a while, and then we got denied because they just weren't doing integrations right now. 
So. Well, so if you get it out to ZipRecruiter, you'll be on all like the local news boards because um, what's that big company that owns all the news stations uh, throughout the country? Garrett, Gannett or something like that? I can't Gannett. remember. Gannett. Somebody owns a bunch of the news stations and they, uh, if you didn't know this, they all, all these news stations have job boards is kind of like on their website and mm -hmm. they all, they're all posting from ZipRecruiter. So um, not that you probably don't know this already, but uh, um, I was trying to get on my local uh, local news station job boards and I have, I have no interest in, you know, creating a relationship with ZipRecruiter, but uh, maybe you do. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, and we're integrated with ZipRecruiter right now. Oh, are you? Yeah. So when you post a job on there, it, it gets posted to ZipRecruiter, but you might have something better than what I have. We, we might need to talk, we, but we just don't, but there's just not a lot of traction from there. So, okay. All right. We uh, we are at the top of the hour. This was really cool. Don, thank you for joining us. Um, I dropped the URL to uh, hirehoo.co in the uh, in the chat. Check it out. I mean, it's a pretty cool website. It's a pretty cool platform. If you don't have any, uh, you know, tools like this to uh, manage your, your applicant workflow, it's a heck of an investment, you know, trying to do this manually the way that it was done, you know, 10 years ago is, is not where you want to be in today's world. Um, any last thoughts you'd like to share, Dom? No, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. I love talking about this stuff and I love talking business. So I appreciate this, it so much. This was great, man. I'm so glad that I, that I asked you. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You do. Okay. Really good stuff. Thanks so much, Dom. It's nice uh, meeting you on Smart Business Moves. You'll have to come back. All right. Thank you, guys. So you, we are done for today. Uh, Monday is Memorial Day. We are taking the day off, but we'll be back next Wednesday. So a week from today, 5 o'clock Eastern. Um, for another smart business post. Right. Have a safe week weekend. Have fun. We'll see you next uh, Wednesday, five o'clock. Bye bye. Yeah.